Hey, we're back talking about solar again in this series on Simple Solar, and we could not be more excited to share this information with you. Yes, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to get rid of all your clothes and all your shoes to make room for 20 batteries. <laughs> That's really good news. And you don't have to overload the top of your RV. You don't have to spend your life savings. You guys, you're gonna love this information. We are so excited to share it with you. So hit that follow button and stay with us. Okay, first let me say there are many different opinions on how much solar you need how many panels how many batteries you know what is sufficient and that was probably our first hang up when we were talking about getting a solar system because it was like i mean do i need 20 batteries do i need two batteries do i need panels hanging off the side of my <laughs> rv when i'm driving Or could I get away with a couple? There's a lot of confusion there. That's true. I mean, really, in an ideal world, we would love to have everything. We would love to have a lot of panels and all the batteries and be able to run everything, like my hair dryer and my curling iron and whatever I might want to do. Air conditioning. All at the same time. All at the same time. That would be, awesome. time. Time. That would be I mean, that would be really cool. But due to several limiting factors, it just wasn't possible for us. Yeah, and the main one is weight, okay? fifth wheels and, and travel trailers especially, but all RVs have a maximum weight allowance, a gross weight that you need to be at or under. Ideally, you need to be under that. <laughs> right. And every little thing adds weight. We learned that the very first day we moved into the RV, when we started calculating how much weight a pair of jeans holds, <laughs> yes. you know? It's really crazy. And these fifth wheels don't leave you a whole lot of room because they're trying to be lightweight for your truck to pull it and all the other factors too. So when you look at batteries and wire and panels, it can add up weight really, really quick. And next thing you know, you're gonna have to get rid of your clothes, your shoe collection, and your kid's rock collection probably. <laughs> and that can be frustrating. Nobody wants those tears. Such a shame. <laughs> so you gotta consider those factors when you're thinking about your ideal package. Another factor is your roof. Now again, class A's, class C's, maybe not so much of a concern. You still need to look that up. But I know for sure travel trailers and fifth wheels those roofs are really not designed for a lot of weight. And every time you put another panel, another 20, another 40, another 100 pounds on there, you run the risk of damaging that long, time, long term for sure, but maybe even in the short term. I mean, you hit a bump on some of these roads, God forbid you're going through Louisiana. Those panels could come through the roof. So you need to understand what it can do, what that roof can hold, and know what your limitations are too before you go too crazy on loading that thing up with panels. And the last factor is cost. I mean, just the difference between two batteries and six batteries is thousands of dollars. And so being able to make a smaller package, build a smaller package to fit your needs but not going overboard is really gonna save you money. That's our goal in this video is we're gonna give you kind of a glimpse into what our life looks like with our system so you can have a point of reference because when we started we had no clue like what is 500 amp hours what is 100 amp hours how does that translate to daily life so we're going to go through the details right now and tell you how our life works with the 500 amp hours we have and our system the first thing you need to consider are what are your needs for boondocking before you start designing your solar package yeah, if you're planning on just being out uh, over the weekend or just boondocking for two or three days at a time, you might not need such a big package. But if you're going to be out for weeks at a time, you're going to have to consider some everyday life things like running a computer or blow dryer or whatever you want to do that need to be considered in the package. So you might need a little bit more at that point. Yeah, when we first started designing our package with Go Power, we told them what the things were that we wanted to make sure we could do. So we have a residential refrigerator. We wanted to make sure that that was going to run all day and night. We weren't going to have any issues there. Um, also, we wanted to make sure that we could run the furnace because if we got into a place that was just really cold, we wanted to make sure that we slept comfortably and we didn't get too cold. Yeah. Um, also, you know, maybe run the TV for an hour a day, be able to charge our devices, maybe blow dry my hair. And run a computer. Since <laughs> right. I work from home, it was really important to me that I not be worried about plugging that thing in and running it throughout the day. So I had to consider those factors. But when we presented that to the Go Power team, they came back with a very simple, effective, uh, package that I think has worked really well. Now one note is 
one of the questions they ask is, are you looking to run your air conditioner? That's one of the biggest yeah. draws in your RV. And we said, no, that's not a big deal. When we go boondocking, we're not looking to run the air conditioner. We want to be in a place or in weather where we don't need to do that. That's not really our plan. We're not going to boondock to, uh, you know, spend four months out in the desert. <laughs> no. That's not our vision. If that's your vision, make that's sure great. you write that down uh, before you talk to them about the package. But ours, we're looking for nice weather and we want to boondock as just a pleasure and an enjoyable thing. And so the package they designed for us works really well for that. But we can't run our air conditioner for three or four hours a day and it work out just fine. But again, that wasn't our goal. So think about what your goals are before you design that package. With that in mind, I'm gonna go through our system and let you know what it looks like and what we have so you can understand kind of a basis of what you can do with this system. First off, we have four 190 watt panels from GoPower, and then we have two 250 amp hour batteries for 500 amp hours total. So here's what a regular day looks like for us. We start off the morning by making some hot tea. So we are using our tea kettle to warm up the water and that definitely draws some power. Yeah, it's like 180 amps on the 12 volt side. So you see that coming through your battery, but it's only for about five minutes. So there's a, there's a lot of that throughout the day and we'll get into details there, but a lot of the stuff we use is gonna be on and off, on and off. And if it's during a typical day, the sun is gonna just charge that back up. We're gonna use down, it's gonna charge back up. So it works out good. Okay, so after breakfast, what do we do? So usually we'll do some school with the kids. We might be using the lights for that, be using some of the devices and need to plug those in. Uh, ben will be working on his computer and he's got his big monitor set up and that draws a lot of power apparently. <laughs> yeah, and note on that, you know, anytime you're plugging something into an outlet, it's drawing a lot more amperage than the DC voltage. So whenever you look at the back of the monitor, or you look at the refrigerator or anything else, it usually has a plate on it that will tell you how many watts it's pulling or how many amps it's pulling. So my monitor pulls, you know, maybe two amps, one amp, something like that. But once you plug it into the outlet and you're pulling from the battery, that's 10 amps. So if that's running all day, it is a draw you have to consider. But again, our system handles that just fine. Right, and so we might have the TV on for about an hour each day, but then we're going to be cooking, so we'll need to run the um, vent hood. We might have the oven going with the convection oven or the lights. Um, and then if it gets too cold at night, we're definitely gonna be turning on that furnace or maybe even a small space heater to just warm us up a little bit. Yeah, and during the day we charge our devices so that as it's pulling the battery, the sun can just recharge. For the most part, we start the day, we run that thing up to full throughout the day, and then when the evening comes, sun starts going down, we'll be at probably 65 to 70% on our battery. So we've used all the way down to 30%. Once we go to bed and we use that throughout the night, if we're using a furnace, we might wake up the next morning with about 40% left. If we're not using the furnace, we might end up with about 50% left. And that's throughout the night again, having uh, things plugged in, using lights if you need to, but we don't use things excessively. And that's the next part I wanna to talk to you about. Even though we can run whatever we want off of these batteries, we have learned some different ways to minimize what we're pulling off the batteries to just make them last longer. One of those is teaching the kids to turn the lights off before they leave their room, and that is a major job, but we are really close. I mean, we are really close to that. Another way is telling the kids to not just leave the refrigerator open with their head in there. That's important too. Yeah. <laughs> That'll draw your battery down. Um, and one of the most important things we figured out after our first week of boondocking is to turn our electric water heater off and just use the propane portion. Now I know some of you guys don't have that option, either it's just propane and no electric or all electric and no propane. Those are things you have to kind of sort out. Ours has both so we can choose one or the other and that is amazing for our system yeah. because when we boondock we can kick the element off. Now the water heater element pulls a lot of power. In fact, we've popped breakers before because we didn't realize that that was on and we kicked both air conditioners on and it just kind of went crazy. So just being aware of that, it's a hidden thing outside, you just don't think about it, but that might be draining your battery really fast. So if you're experiencing that, definitely check that. But that is another thing we do to just drag that battery out. Yeah, and we also make sure that we unplug everything when we're not using it because it will still be running in the background and also charge all of our devices during the day while the sun is charging the batteries. And that way we're not draining the batteries at night. 
Now, the way the system works, and, and in the next video, by the way, I'm gonna go through the control panel to show you how it does all of the smart things that the Go Power system does. I've been so impressed with it. But one thing you can know is once it gets to 100%, then it just sits idle because, of course, there's no more battery to charge. So if you were not charging your devices during the day or plugging things up during the day and it hit 100%, it's just gonna pause. But if you had it plugged in, let's say it uses 15% to charge everything, then it has time to charge back up by the end of the day. So that's why we try to charge during the day, unplug things at night, that way it gives that battery as much time as it needs to. So bottom line, 500 amp hours is really a great amount to use for what we need. So again, as you assess your needs, you might find out you can do with less, you might need to do with a little bit more, um, but there's a couple little things, habits you have to form to stretch that battery out. Uh, one of those things is just using windows instead of lights or even cooking outside instead of cooking inside. Um, and also that keeps the heat from inside and then you don't need to turn on a fan or the AC. So any little thing that you can do is gonna help out. Okay, I hope that has been a helpful glimpse into what it's like to live on the 500 amp hours when you're boondocking. And I hope that helps you kind of define your needs a little bit more. And the GoPower website is a really good tool to be able to build a package or you can give them a call because they are super helpful over the phone. Listen, leave us a comment. If you've got any questions, drop it down there. We are so excited about sharing this information. We've got one more video on this particular topic. So make sure you hit that follow button, hit the bell if you wanna be notified and we look forward to seeing you next time.